Okay. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, wherever you are in the world, wherever you are on the planet. My name is Anthony Carter, and this is another edition of Visionaries and Truth Tellers. My next guest is somebody I met uh, two days ago. I was on Twitter <laughs> and uh, saw what he was doing in the world and wanted to reach out to him and didn't have to use my usual Twitter stalking prowess for months to get him to talk to me. But he's a young man who's a filmmaker, a storyteller, um, doing a lot of great work. Um, a lot of A-list celebrities have been retweeting his work. I saw that today. <laughs> <laughs> he's won a ton of awards for his um, films, documentaries. Um, so without further ado, I want to uh, introduce you in the world, my listeners, to Francisco Cabrera Feo. Is that correct, the last name? Yeah. Okay, I yeah, got it. Perfect. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Hi, hi. Well, thank you so much for having me, and I'm excited <laughs> to talk. Yeah, the fail, fail, it's funny, fail, fail stands for ugly in Spanish. That's what I thought. When I saw that, I was like, is that a misprint? I was like, <laughs> uh, no. no, I saw it because I know some Spanish and I have a lot of right. friends that speak Spanish. And I'm thinking, I know what that word means. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my mother decided to give me, you know, a little chip on my shoulder to, to, to fight it. So okay. that's my mother's last name. Yeah. So okay. Always, always have something to prove when you have a right. last name like that. Always a battle. Got it. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's jump right in. Um, I usually start off by asking people to give, give the listeners, give me a 30 second bio about themselves, what they do, why they do it. Um, your, uh, track record when I was reading and the films I was watching, um, was so extensive. I'll give you a minute. So whenever you're ready, <laughs> just jump in and talk about your bio, tell a little bit about who you are, how you got into filmmaking, that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just starting out still, so so I'm gonna try to keep it short as well. But um, yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a writer and director uh, who was born in Venezuela. So I lived in Venezuela for about 11 years, uh, and 11 years ago, also, I moved to the U.S. So I've been in Venezuela 11 years, and in the U.S. for 11 years. So half of my life in both countries, and that really kind of drove my storytelling, which is feeling like I'm not from one place or from the other. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I decided to, I started to make films, you know, I always wanted to be a mime, or I wanted to be a magician, or I wanted to be, you know, anything that was very much like, pay attention to me, basically. Um, so, when, once I moved to the United States, and I actually didn't know the language, and my brother got a job at a movie theater, and he brought me with him uh, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., and I would watch three movies back to back to back. Uh, and like that, I you know I not only like actually learned how to speak English watching movies, but I also learned the language of, of filmmaking. Okay. And that's kind of the first time I fully felt like I was like kind of falling in love um, with, with storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I started to make, you know, short films in high school. And the first big start for me and the first kind of break was I made a short film called Revolving Child. Uh, I made it during the summer. Uh, we didn't have any equipment, we didn't have any money, we didn't have anything. Uh, so we decided to do a fundraiser for it. Um, kind of, early, you know, doing crowdfunding, but mainly having it be a community fundraising. So we did, we, we went to a wing stop, we went to a wing place, and we hosted a restaurant um, fundraiser. So basically, we brought a ton of people uh, and they if they showed up with the flyer of the movie, ten percent of what we made would go for us. Would 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 be give it to the budget of the film. So we made, we made such a great community there, and then we also did a fundraiser online, um, and that was kind of, you know, we raised about two hundred and five two thousand five hundred dollars or so. Uh, so we we raised almost three thousand uh, dollars, and we made this kind of you know what i think is a powerful film about a little girl who finds a gun in her house um and from that that kind of you know we didn't think it was going to do extremely well or we just made it because we wanted to make it but that film um john legend and mark duplass uh watched it and they actually brought it to the Toronto international film festival uh in a and it was the year that la la land was premiering so it was a big year um, and that's when kind of my first 
big break was when I felt like somebody was kind of seeing something in me uh, before I saw it in myself. And that was, you know, that kind of pushed me forward a lot because, you know, I was at this big festival showing this movie uh, thanks to this partnership between Act Body Spray and Mark Duplass and Joe Legend, which was like a crazy thing. Uh, I actually literally just ran out of like, um, of like hair products that they gave me. Like that's how, that's how much they, they gave us product for it. Um, weird, weird segue, segue or just like, um, but so from that moment, you know, a lot of, we got a lot of attention, a lot of, you know, the film got a lot of attention, I got a lot of attention and my head just grew so big and my ego just grew so big. I was, you know, I was 17, 18. Um, oh. So my, my, my ego was like, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm going to be the kid that makes it at this age, you know? And I, you know, I have immigrant parents, so they very much want you to go to college and college and college and college. And I was like, I don't need college. I don't need anything. But then I realized that I did. And so I decided to go to college. Uh, I went to uh, FSU, which is um, Florida State University's College of Motion Picture Arts, which is where Barry Jenkins went. Um, and a lot of his team went there. And through that, I, just decided, I started to make, I started to find my voice. I started to learn so much about doing other jobs that wasn't directing. So I was doing, I was passing out food one day, the next day I was producing, the next day I was writing, the next, I was doing everything. Mm -hmm. And I was meeting so many other talented and incredible storytellers and building kind of my, my people, you know, you find your people. Right. Um, and through that process of college, obviously there's a lot of um, growth and emotional and personal growth. So that's when I realized, oh, maybe, maybe I'm not straight. You know, maybe, you know, there's a lot of my voice that came from that, that I didn't know, or, or I knew, but I couldn't put my work to, you know, I couldn't name it something, you know, I didn't meet an openly queer person, a, a very out queer person until I went to college. So the first time I met, first time I met a queer person, I was like, oh my God, you can just do that. You, you're allowed to be mm -hmm. yourself, right. um, which kind of blew my mind. Um, so yeah, through that college, I decided to make a lot of films and, you know, the film Revolving Child ended up winning a student Emmy, uh, which was kind of also incredible, an incredible experience. And I felt so lucky for that. And we just continued to make short films. And about three months ago or four months ago, I graduated from college. Mm -hmm. And that is maybe a good rest. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure I broke your, your one minute uh limit that's fine that's what that's why they that's why they created editors and editing <laughs> mm -hmm. no but that's why i mean it, you know i i'm always interested in how people um get started with things i'm always interested in people's paths like you know one decision anywhere along that process could have landed you somewhere else so i'm always fascinated by people's decisions and how they take, you know, you take something that you think is as harmless as, you know, you going with your brother to watch movies for six hours a day. Like, okay, just stay over here and stay out of, stay out of my way. I got to work. So sit here and watch right. movies. Now, some, some kids would have been, you know, setting the theater on fire or sleeping <laughs> or whatever, but you're watching this stuff and it's, and it, you're soaking it in. Right. Yeah. And then now it's coming out in different ways. So I'm very fascinated with that. Um, I want to talk about the movie about uh, revol the revolve. Is it Revolving Child? Yeah, Revolving Child. Okay, which was, yeah, I was, was high school. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to. I was trying to get. Where can people find that? Because I was looking for it today, and I want to make sure um, the images that I saw from it were really powerful, and I want to make sure that people can get them. So where can they? So, where can they find that? So it's not currently public. It used to be public, but it mm -hmm. is. You know, we have to. Um, just because we're, we're talking about doing something with the short film. Um, so we have to kind of take it down for a little bit, but mm -hmm. uh, it's probably going to be up again. Just everything's going to be on my site. Um, so okay. just my name, dot com. Uh, that's where it's, it's all going to be. It's all going to live. Okay. okay, good. Because yeah, like I say, I saw some images from it and I was looking at your director's reel and I said, oh my God, that looks really good. And I have a thing about, um, I want to do work around, oh, I'm going to do work we've already started doing work around children and violence. Yeah. And it's, it's um, so when I saw that, I was interested in what 
you know, what story is actually being told here? Because I, I only saw yeah. a clip. So yeah, right. um, so I will, I will go, definitely go back on your website and check that out. So let me ask you this. So um, it's not, how old are you? Because you sound like you're super young. I'm 22. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, now you're making, yeah, me, just... you're making me feel old because I have grandkids your age. So. <laughs> okay. Well, that's yeah. good. So you already know what yeah. you, you're very um, focused and on point for someone because I was not there at 22. I was doing, yeah. you know, I was doing whatever the hell I was doing, but I was not as uh, focused and determined as you are, as, as you are, yeah. Um, so let me ask you this. So what are you, <clears throat> what are you excited about now? What are you working on now? What excites you about what's going on in the world now? Yeah, so right now I've been, I've been working on a lot of uh, projects. I've, I've actually started to fall in love with television. Uh, I've spent so much time focusing on feature writing and working on that type of narrative work. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, I realize how much you can do with television, how many, how bigger risks are being made in, in, in television, you know, mm -hmm. how, how I don't like to write alone. You know, I actually found out yesterday that we got the go ahead on to, to develop. We pitched the show. We just got the go ahead to develop uh, the pilot. So to our production company, uh, okay. we obviously can't talk about, but whatever. Um, <laughs> but it was incredible because it's such a right. you know, it it was it was it was the first time, it was the first time where my writing spoke for me, which okay. is not something I've had. So as a director or, so a director I usually show a short film that's like oh this is the thing that's gonna get me in, um, or or it's me being kind of a showman, you know, mm -hmm. and this time it was sending just a pitch, a written pitch. Oh, um, okay. Which is scary because I'm not there to like fight for it. I'm not there to present it. Mm -hmm. And and I've never called myself a writer. Um, I always call myself a director. And the writing was just a way to get to directing. Um, but during this time, obviously, you know, I, we can't make movies currently in a safe way. Uh, so I've used so much of the time to develop uh, pilots and develop TV shows. So one of the one of the scripts that I've been working on is called Safer Spaces, uh, which is uh it tackles uh, you know what happens when all the gay people leave the South. because uh, you know everybody wants to leave the South because obviously like there's such a you know there's a conservative uh atmosphere there. So what happens to those who stay behind, those who don't have the privilege to leave? On that project, um you know personally as you know a personal project and I've been working on, you know, that script that we're about to start um, developing. Okay. And yeah, sorry, I'm, I can rant, I can talk about, you know, I can talk too much, so please shut me up. But there's a lot of stuff that, that I'm excited about, um, mm -hmm. that I'm excited to make, because I, I want to tackle all the things that are, you know, uh, struggling inside, you know? Okay, very good, okay. Um, uh... Cause it seems like I've heard that before, that the thing about the, the gay folks leaving the South. I don't know where I, I read that somewhere, or, or I may have read something that you put out there about it. But Probably, it, yeah. it, it's, it's something that, um, as a gay Black man, I have lived all over the world. You know, I've lived in Japan. I've lived in, um, I was in Greece two years ago, you know, for a writer's conference. And, um, and it's interesting about how who you are, like when you take who you are, like to the different parts of the world, what that means. And I actually went to college in the South. I went to college in the eighties. So that tells you that <laughs> I was in uh, wow. Tennessee in the eighties and it was a very different setup. I was watching a show the other night and they were in Nashville and the way they were interacting and talking. And I thought, Hmm, that's different. You know, like that would have, <laughs> none of that would have happened when I was in college. <laughs> Because I was in college in the eighties, you know, you're talking thirty, almost forty years ago. So it's just, it's very interesting how how things change, how people kind of like there's this gradual movement to evolve and change, and then every so often you get a reminder that things haven't changed, or they yeah. haven't, or they haven't changed as much as you thought they have, and it's kind of like, oh, that's that's a little scary. So yeah, okay, so very I, good. Yeah, go on. No, I mean. Just to add to that, I think, you know, the U.S. has, like, you know, made bigger strides than, you know, than other countries. 
I think for me, in my experience is, you know, since I come from a different country and I have immigrant parents, they're on the clock of the you know, Venezuela, of the country they've left. So they are, you know, their idea, and, and this film follows, you know, a bunch of Latinx um, immigrant kids or first generation kids. Um, so the idea that yes, the U.S. has, you know, has pushed forward or maybe, you know, white kids have parents who, who love them uh, or who are completely accept them. But I think when you have, you know, a family who isn't from the U.S., um, their timeline and their timeline of, of acceptance, I've experienced from my personal experience, um, is very different. It is very, mm-hmm. you know, still needs a lot of work. And I think there's a, there's something there because I think a lot of people think, oh, we're so past coming out stories. Oh, we're so past, you know, you know, you know that type of that type of early queerness. But when people say, oh, we're so past that, I think they're talking about, oh, white people already did it. Instead of saying, right, oh, you're yeah. like we are, you know, I've seen Love Simon and I and I like Love Simon and I like shows like that, that show that aspect of things. But I think mm-hmm. there's a lot still to be explored from a lens that that hasn't been given the chance to to tell that story. Yeah, I think a lot of times, you know, people run into the same thing when you start talking about feminism, right, or when you start talking about any kind of social movement, particularly with people who aren't white and male and straight. Whenever you start talking about any other group of people, I think a lot of times the assumption is always, well, my experience was this. So, of course, everybody else is, has been there. Right. It's kind of like, no. <laughs> and it's a very, you know, it's, it's an interesting, you know, you look at, um, it's like when I first started blogging, which was in 2010, 2009, um, 2010. So it's been 10 years at this point. I was, I'd always been writing and doing theater and plays and all this kind of stuff. And I just started blogging because there were all these young um, LGBTQ kids, youth, killing themselves, committing suicide because of the bullying. And I was yeah. so shocked and so taken aback because like you said, I assumed, okay, well, I went through all that and that was a hundred years ago. Please tell me we're not at, the, we're still not doing that. Like I just couldn't, and it took me a right. minute to really figure out oh, okay, this has just reinvented itself and now it's showing up this way, you know? Yeah. And I was really shocked that I remember talking to straight friends about it and their, the rationale was very flippant and very not, very, you know, like, oh, well, that's always been going on and kids have all, and I'm thinking, that's your response to like, like, I didn't get it. So I was, right. so there, there was a minute I was confused about a lot of things because I was confused about people's response to this. And I was, conf- and I was still baffled that it was going on because I thought we had, you know, cause I was like, okay, I've been through that. And, you know, and then you, and I tend to look at things like I, like you were saying, I look at things like in terms of what I'm seeing in a culture, right? What TV shows are on the air, what movies are getting made, what scripts are getting sold. And when you look at things and you say, okay, um, this show is on the air and Will and Grace is on the air and Moonlight and all these things. So, and people are not screaming and running out of the theater. So clearly we move beyond that. And we have, in many aspects, we haven't, you know, so I think it's an ongoing battle. I don't think it's ever a point at which you can say, um, we're done, right? Or this is, yeah. or we, or here's a story that we don't need to tell, right? Right. Because I think a lot of times people always say, yeah. oh, it's, it's only about eight stories in the world. And, I, and what people have reminded me of, what really great writing coaches have reminded me of and mentors is that, okay, yeah, there are, there are a certain number of stories. But your particular story, even though it might be the same story, it's going to be different because your life has been different. Yeah, life experience has been different, you know. Yeah. So it, it always amazes me when somebody makes the decision that this is the way it is for everybody. <laughs> Yeah. Like, no one is. Still, yeah. And I think film, you know, film and, and television can can hopefully, you know, give you an insight of the places where there's still work to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I hope to do, you know, and 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 you know, make sure that folks know that like, oh, yes, you know, this side might be, you know, ready, you know, taking it all in and hugging them all and, and loving deeply. But I don't know if you know this angle in this corner where still needs, you know work still needs to get done, mm-hmm. um, and that's what I hope to do at least you know with this one story. 
Okay. So yeah, that's great. So what I, uh, I encourage you to keep going, which I know you will keep telling the stories. You know, I think, um, the world needs people telling stories who also knows how to tell them well, you know, in a way that gets people to like pay attention, you know, and take them in and not just, you know, I'm, I'm talking because I can talk, you know? <laughs> right. So that's always a tough one. So, uh, what about, I want to get this in a couple of times. So how can people reach you? Then we'll come back. I'm going to have a couple other questions before we wrap up. Yeah. Where yeah. Can we find I think you? the best, the best place is on Twitter. I'm, I'm there. Okay. So, um, I am and Fran and then Cabrera. So I am Fran Cabrera. Tell me about, um, what are you looking, well, you kind of talked about what you're doing now. If you had a crystal ball, Yep. and you can look 10 years in the future, what, what do you see for yourself and the planet in 10 years? 2030, oh, yeah. 2030. Um, I the planet, you know, there's two, there's the heart, there's the easier question, I mean, not easier, but the hopeful question, and then the scary question, which is the planet. Um, I don't know, I don't know, you know, I, I can't speak for what, you know, the climate of, of this country uh, or of this planet uh, in 10 years. So that's, I don't even know where to start. I think right now, I think we're all, we're all very scared. Uh, and it's okay to, to feel those feelings for sure uh, and allow yourself to feel those feelings. Um, but for me, <laughs> which sounds now super selfish, um, for me, I, I hope to be able to show run a show I'd be the showrunner of a show um, where I can hire, I can hire all the people that everybody else has forgotten or everybody else has, has not given a chance. I think I have so many friends who are so extremely talented that other people just haven't seen it. And I feel lucky. I'm like, oh, I know you before the people know that you're amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's super exciting. And I want to be able to like hire those people who, who, who others don't see their shine or their powerfulness and their specialness. Uh, because I think for a lot of, a lot of time, others for me have been, have given me that chance where they've seen something in me before I did. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the people that gave me that one shot or, or the people that are, you know, are looking out for me, I want to be able to look mm -hmm. out for folks. Um, okay. So I, I feel like I could hire a lot of other great storytellers. So okay. Excellent. Very good. Very good. Yeah, I'm I'm expecting some big things in the next decade. It's just, it's interesting watching things unfold, and trying to figure out where um, like what people are doing during this time. And what I mean by that is what they're doing in terms of what are people working on. Like what, you know, are you honing skills? Are you, I teach and I teach a lot of young people and I'm, I've been teaching and I've been teaching this way for a while, but definitely since COVID hit, my first step class when I came in was like, okay, either you can panic, you know, I'm like, oh my God, the sky is falling or you can plan. So what's it yep. gonna be, you know? And we, and I talk a lot about, okay, getting your ducks in a row so that when the smoke clears, you're ready to go. You're not doing the mad scramble like 99% of the population. Like, oh, okay, you know, I need to find a job or I need to do this. I need to, and it's like, no, get, you know, spend this time to really hone skills and do some things that you wanted to do. Because yeah. once it, because once it shifts, then it'll be time to do something else. Yeah. So, yeah. So I want to encourage everybody watching, everybody that's uh, listening to do, and there's a lot of noise outside. I don't know what's going on. I can't hear it. So, so oh, good, good. Yeah. It. No, yeah. But I think if, if I, if, if just to go off what you're saying, I think in my experience, I have not been ready when the door opened. Mm -hmm. I've been, and I think, I don't know, I, I, I don't think I can speak for giving advice, but I think if I could give advice to myself earlier, you know, to a younger self, if to, you know, I, I'm constantly knocking at the door to be let in. Mm -hmm. And when the door opens, I'm not ready to walk in. I've, I've had that experience a lot. I don't have that anymore because I've caught it. But mm -hmm. I'm constantly asking for the shots. 
or I was constantly, I mean, I was 17, 18, 19, like that. I shouldn't be ready and that's fine. But if I could, you know, told my, my younger self or yeah, my 18 year old, 19 year old self, it would be, yes, it's cool that you're knocking at the door and, and somebody might open and give you that shot. Mm -hmm. But, but when the door opens, be ready, have your scripts ready, have your short film ready, have mm -hmm. your pitch ready because, because I have found myself, you know, somebody offered me, uh, uh, offer me a, a shot and just be like, well, I didn't actually think you were going to open the door. So I just, so I, I, so I don't, I don't really have it. Can you give right. me six months? Uh, so no. I can work on it? <laughs> and, and I made that mistake. I think last time I made that mistake was six months ago. Like it hasn't been a long time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's the honest, the honest truth. Um, and it's the hardest lesson that I've had to learn, which is be ready. Like, mm -hmm. be like, like, stop asking for the opportunity. If when it's given, you're not ready to take it. Um, and that's, it's not, I can't give advice to others. I don't think I can, but I can give advice to my younger self. Well, I'm, you know, I'm glad that you said that because I've been trying to figure out for me, during this quote unquote downtime, I'm, I'm honing a lot of skills, right? And I'm, I've made myself like just hone kind of one at a time. And it's like, okay, do this and then get that over with. And so I, I've gradually since, yeah, probably since March, I've taken on a, taken, made a point of saying, okay, each month I'm gonna do this. And I could not figure out for the life of me, and I've been struggling with this little, probably maybe the last week, the last four or five days about, okay, well, what the hell am I doing? Because the reason I'm saying that is because like you were talking about being prepared. For many years, I was an actor. I lived in New York. I moved from, I moved from Detroit. I started acting in Detroit. I moved to New York. I was an actor in New York for like 13 years, right? So I knew the significance and the importance of being prepared, right? So I was always in classes. I was always auditioning. I was always honing that skill. I taught myself how to write. I kept, and I was, and I had everything you needed in terms of like when an opportunity came for me to be on stage or when somebody said, oh, can you go over here tomorrow? Or if I got a call at eight o'clock saying, can you audition for this American Express commercial? Which is actually what happened to me more, a couple of times. They call oh, this is for American Express. Can you go to here tomorrow? Nine. Got it. You know what I mean? So there is there is something to be said for um, the preparation. And I'm just thinking about that. I'm looking at this picture. I have, a, I have pictures of Viola Davis and other people that I, you know, my muses I love run. I'm looking at this picture about and she actually said that That's recently. Beautiful. She recently said that in an interview about running the race. So when somebody hands you the baton, you can do your leg of it. And she said a lot of people are not prepared. They shouldn't. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing, but she's saying a lot of people are not prepared. So even when something happens, when that door opens and it's time for you to come in and shine, you can't do it. So um, that's a long, a long way of me saying that I've been trying to figure out the last couple of days, the last week, well, what the hell am I doing? Because I'm getting all these opportunities and I'm learning all this stuff. And it's, it's a lot of, I'm in this huge learning curve, right? So I've been, I've dedicated myself to learning all the stuff about making movies and making films. And I've been saying like, okay, well, what is going on? Like, I, I don't know, like, and what it is I'm preparing, you know, I'm, and I can say that because I was an actor for a long time, coming to the writing and writing is, um, I don't want to say it's easy. It's not necessarily difficult. I'm learning how to write differently, but there, mm -hmm. there's, there's some strengths that I brought to it. Yeah. And I keep, and I, I'm, and I'm pushing to get stuff to happen, but what, from what I just heard from what you just said, I'm very inspired because I feel like, okay, I don't have to push for things to happen. The push should be in honing this new set of skills. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then you know, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean I don't talk to other people and I'm a hermit, but the push needs, I need to shift the focus. So the push is, okay, how do I get really great as a um, storyteller on a, with a script? Not just emotionally yep. as an actor, because as an actor, I'm yep. doing it emotionally all the time. And I can do that in my sleep, you know, and I, even when I'm writing, I know what, that's one of my, that's that is my superpower when I'm writing. I know where everybody is emotionally at any given moment. That's great. Now that's I don't know where the hell they are physically, but I know where they are emotionally, <laughs> <laughs> or what they you know. So yeah, but you learn how to do that, and so so I'm yeah. so glad that you said that because now it's cleared up. Uh, four days, six days, a week's worth of angst with me trying to figure out. Well, you know, should you know, should I be pushing over here? And it's like, well, there's not time for that. 
yeah. it's not, it's not, you're letting the stuff cook you know you're letting you're yeah. making just do you're letting it cook and if it takes it's, it's going to take how long it takes you know and it's kind of like and in it in the worst like you said the absolute worst thing is not the worst thing is not having an opportunity the worst thing is giving it have an opportunity and not being prepared for it yeah somebody opened the door and saying please walk in and like you said you say oh well can we do this later no that's like i need you to do it now. yeah and and i have literally experienced this mm -hmm. i have seen up doors close in front of me after begging to come in mm -hmm. um so it it literally hurts every single time and i and, it, and after i felt that feeling for the last time i was like this i'm never gonna be found in a place mm -hmm. where where you're asking me for the script and i don't have the script right yeah Wow, that is very that that's some good stuff there. That's a, <laughs> I'm glad we don't cut that one out. <laughs> no, no, no. That's some that's some good because I'm working on a, a pilot myself and I'm I'm kind of yeah. stuck and I and part of the being stuck is what you just said. It's kind of like, okay, just take a breath, and you know you don't have to finish the whole thing in one night. You know, yeah. um, I'm about halfway through, which is good. You know, and I'm reading other pilots. So I've been reading tons of pilots and I'm putting them aside and I'm writing my own and I'm writing my own pilot based on a collection of science fiction short stories that I wrote a couple of years ago. And that's a whole challenge because I know about, I know, I'm trying to write, like I don't know these people and I've been writing about them for years. <laughs> so I do know them. <laughs> so trying to separate that in my brain. So yeah, it happens, but we'll get there. I'll get there. We'll, you'll get there. Yeah. So just keep showing up. If the whole, if the world blew up tomorrow, all of this went away, your, all of the interviews went away, the website, everything went away, my website, your website, and they had, the only thing the planet had to survive on was one uh, key phrase or one bit of wisdom from Francisco Cabrera Feo, what would it be? <laughs> I think the best words of wisdom is that it's, if it's personal and it's specific, then it's always gonna be original because there's no one like you. Mm like there is if it's no one has ever and, and you spoke about it as well no one has ever seen the world the way that you do mm -hmm. no one has watched the same steps no one has had the same mother nobody has mm -hmm. like they just we're just all so specifically different so if you are the most if you're in storytelling and anything if you are the most specific and truthful and honest about yourself then it's mm -hmm. always going to be original okay. always going to be original thank you for joining me today it was short notice we met like I said, a couple of days ago we made it happen quick in less than 72 hours i like it so my, my film uh junior with a y uh is on Vimeo, on youtube on my website on twitter it's everywhere and that's how you know that's how we met mm -hmm. uh was through that film and and it's a little glimpse of of hope i hope a little you know a little glimpse of of love and, and seeing yourself, you know, seeing a living embodiment of yourself in somebody else okay. uh, and allowing yourself to, to, to let a little bit of your light out. Okay. So Junior, I hope everybody watches it. <laughs> they will, you have 10 million hits. <laughs> I hope so, I hope so, yeah. Well, let me ask you this before, I was gonna wrap up, but since you brought that up, I'm gonna, and it's my show. I'm gonna shift gears a bit. No, do you wanna do, do you do you wanna talk? More? Would you like to share more about you here? I would love to. Yeah. Okay. I would love to. Yeah. That's it. Since you know, it came out maybe like it came out maybe like two months ago publicly. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been doing the festival rounds. Uh, we premiered at HBO's uh, New York Latino Film Festival. Uh, then we we had our LA premiere at Outfest mm -hmm. uh, Fusion, and then we just premiered online so we are finally kind of uh everywhere anybody can watch it but yeah it was my it was uh, a film that i made during film school it was a film i made when i was still in the closet um and and i wanted to explore that feeling of of meeting a queer person for the first time and, and that's you know we talked a little bit about that but that that idea that oh my god you can do that you're allowed to you know, you're allowed to be yourself. Um, and sometimes when other people see or kind of know that you're different, 
before you do. Um, and so it's a coming of age exploration of that useful, that useful first, first, uh, first glimpses of sexuality and identity um, told through, through magical realism. So we use a lot of bending of reality to, to explore queerness. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you heard it here first, folks. So everybody go out and see it. A million hits. Then I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> then yeah. Then you can work it and make it the full length feature and, you know, go to the Oscars and if, we, if we're ever allowed to do that again. Oh, okay. Right. I'll go to the Oscars on Zoom. I don't care. I'll take that Zoom. I'll, you know, I'll do the Zoom on, I'll, I'll do a Zoom Oscar and y'all can just email me or mail me the, the, the statue and I'll be fine with that. I don't have to be on the stage. I'm cool. <laughs> okay. I will, I will. Put that we'll put that in the universe i will take yeah. it under advisement yeah. yeah um i will keep in contact with you reach out thank you for graciously responding and reaching out and um agreeing to do this yeah um i'm gonna wrap up and saying have a great day have a great afternoon great sunday um keep your hands washed stay in the house yeah keep creating we need uh your voice we need thank your you. presence on the planet um, I will talk with you soon. Yes. Nice meeting you. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you.